Well, like most people, I didn't grow up wanting to be an economist. I went away to school when I went to college. Uh, my father asked, asked me what I planned to do and I didn't have a good answer. He told me I would be a doctor. And so I started off taking courses in uh, math and science, pre-med curriculum, took chemistry, thought I would be a chemistry major. And uh, I liked chemistry. Uh, I found it interesting. I was pretty good at it. Um, but then I took an economics class, kind of for fun, and I also like that. I find economics as a discipline that studies individual and collective behavior of people in a very broad context of life, and I'm interested in studying behavior. I, uh, I was in my undergrad, I was doing a business degree, management actually, and then uh, US University was recruiting at that university for the economics department. <laughs> and that, uh, that attracted my attention. And then economics was really a nice blend of uh, math or science uh, and policy issues and things that were a little bit softer. And so it had a nice combination of features that really appealed to me. Uh, and I think in some, some ways economics is harder than chemistry. It's a tougher subject. Uh, molecules are very predictable and people are not very predictable and we're trying to explain people uh, not the behavior of molecules and uh, it just struck me as a very interesting discipline so that's how I came into it. But I had always in addition to that I had always especially during undergrad read a lot on, uh, on economics and the first book that um, which was the first class in, uh, in undergrad that really caught my attention to economics was uh, Weber's, um, Weber's book on um, the link between the Protestant uh, religion and um, uh, the spirit of capitalism. So when you join economics, it's like committing to a way of life. It, um, it really influences everything that you see around you, whether it's politics, whether it's um, changing trends in the economy itself, or whether it's just you know simple things that you do in your life as well. So you really learn to see how uh, people take into account economic decisions and you know it's just fun well i guess that was a little random because in my country you have to decide on what you're going to do uh, a little early so right after middle school i was either going to choose some of the formal sciences or social sciences and I had good math skills, but I didn't want to do the formal science. And so what I did was, uh, some people suggested, some of my teachers suggested that economics is maybe the way to go because they use a lot of math and it's still a social science. So that was the main reason. So it was really kind of luck, random a little bit. When I graduated from high school, my, my plan was to either go to medical school or to do something that I felt was useful at the time. Again, thinking from a, a high school type of frame, framework. And so I knew that I couldn't memorize anything. So medical school was out of the, out of the uh, question. And so I pursued economics because I felt that it was uh, required to intuition and no memorizing. And here I am. Um, economics helps me understand things from both a macro and micro perspective, which is, I think, the best part about this major. It has uh, broadened my perspectives and helped me think a lot more into uh, financial models, business uh, analysis, and uh, things of that sort that we actually work on in the business school. Well, to me, that was probably the logical uh, thing to do, uh, based on my undergrad education in finance where you are thrown a bunch of uh, equations that you don't know where they come from. Uh, then I got a master's degree in agricultural economics, which is an applied degree, a lot of empirical stuff. 
uh, no much theory behind. So I, I figured that a PhD in economics was going to be the one degree that will give me uh, the theoretical foundations uh, needed in order to understand these two fields that I already have done. Well, I, I always wanted to know why people do whatever they do. I mean, I have this uh, uh, fascination with uh, the, the, the motivation of people's actions. That's why my first major was actually political science. Um, I thought I would understand society better with political science. It's a great major. Um, problem is, in the political science, there is no um, basis to, uh, to, to determine whether something is good or bad. It changes from person to person, time to time, place to place. There is really no criterion. Then I thought this is too vague and making decisions or judgment, judgments is very difficult. Then I moved to economics. In economics, everything uh, falls in the right place. Because in economics, you know, we have a criterion. So, uh, compare marginal cost to marginal revenue. Continue doing a certain action, undertaking a, a, a position for as long as it is, its marginal revenue is no less than its marginal cost. I said, okay, now that is what I was looking for. Now I can understand why people do things, uh, the motivations, etc., even if they may seem odd to somebody else. Then I think I found my calling and I decided to continue in economics. Uh, I think that uh, I had a few doubts. There was no fear or doubt. I was excited to study economics. Oh, very many, especially after, um, after I, um, I actually started a, uh, grad school in economics. We always have these kind of fears and doubts. What am I doing? Is, is it relevant to life? Is it going to be used in real life? These are the things I guess everybody have whenever they have questions about what they are doing. So, of course I did. But whenever I have these kind of doubts, I try to see if I can connect my experience and teaching and my research with real life. Uh, not, not at all. I, I, was, uh, I was pretty much convinced that uh, I wanted to do something related to finance and economics. And that's, that's why I started with finance. I actually got two bachelor's degrees, one in finance and one in economics. Uh, so I knew from uh, very early on that that was my field and I never had any hesitation about it. No, not at all. I, I think it perhaps it was one of the best uh, decisions I've made in my life. Well, th th there are uh, always uh, fears for somebody, you know, when they go at that young age into a major because they know that's going to determine their future. My uh, advantage, however, was that I was already in the university. I spent one year in political science uh, department as my major. I was much more informed as a person as a student than my peers uh, who jumped into the economics directly. That's why I don't think I would say I had uh, fears, but you're always nervous and did you make the right choice or did you uh, perhaps not look uh, at pluses and minuses before you made that choice. As far as I'm concerned, I think I did not have those things as much as a young person coming to the major first time would have. So I can understand others might have it, but not really me. It seemed very intimidating in the beginning, but then slowly, slowly, as you work through it. So. And I think it's still, um, that's still there, right? There's still a big, uh, big question between um, do, uh, do economies get it right, especially in terms of the classical economies versus the behavioral economies that are getting some ground now, but in the end it's all a work in progress. My inspirations are economists like John Liss. I like very much Esther Duflo and Banerjee. I had a very good professor when I was in 
when I was an undergraduate. Uh, William Hindley was his name. And I like them because they're doing the um, randomized trials in different poor areas to try to, to come up with policies using the randomized trials rather than uh, uh, theoretical models. Uh, he was a really interesting guy and so um, I, I liked the way he thought and the way he spoke and he seemed to live a good life and uh, so he was an inspiration. I can't think of anyone who I would consider my inspiration. I do have a lot of respect for uh, John Nash, for example. There are lots of people, of course, who inspired me. But in economics, in particular, Ibn Khaldun is the first person who had some influence on me. I have some people that I like, but I don't know if I can say my inspiration. But uh, whenever someone uses economics in real life, I actually find them more inspiring. For example, some of my students, when they start using some economic uh, terms such as sunk cost and opportunity cost and uh, game theory, when they start using this in real life, I actually find it more inspiring than the, you know, just regular people, you know, just economists doing their, doing their job. No. Okay. Uh. Uh, in terms of my career, I like to see myself in a position where I'm able to analyze the effects of different policies on an economy. I come from a place, I come from Nigeria actually, I come from a place where um, government policy is actually a very important way of reforming the economy. And I see myself as one of those people that can actually make a big effect on the economy through my um, effective policy decisions. I think my, my future in economics is bright. Um, I'm hoping to be a policymaker and improve UAE's economic policies. Um, so I'm completing my bachelor's of economics from AUS right now. I'll be going for my master's in the US and then hopefully a PhD. Um, ultimately, I want to lecture in economics and become a professor. In the context of career, I look at being an analyst in the long run, which uh, does involve a lot of research and uh, involves a lot of analysis, of course, and I think economics empowers me with both the tools towards a successful career as an analyst. Um, it's been really good. Uh, I started working since October 2015, uh, no, 2014. I graduated in June 2014. Um, it's been challenging to start my, a new job and uh, learn everything from the start, but I think that what I learned at US over the four years has really helped me to um, hit the road running kind of in that kind of way. Uh, life is good after graduating from AUS. Uh, you're actually uh, recognized as a graduate, as an alumni of AUS. Uh, when you go for interviews, when you even talk with people around the UAE, even if you travel outside of UAE, AUS is uh, establishing its name and uh, a lot of employers are actually currently looking for people graduating from AUS. Life has actually been pretty interesting. Uh, I think AUS, the program economics provided me a solid foundation in the, the theoretical aspects, and gave me the analytical skills, which uh, came in very handy in the professional life. I think the main challenge is finding a job after university. I was lucky because before the summer, of, the summer before I graduated, I did an internship at PwC, where I'm working now. So that helped me to get a feel for the market, see... I was lucky enough to get a job with the same company I did my internship. But that is the main point of the university degree, is to get a job afterwards. Um, a lot of my friends are finding it difficult finding jobs afterwards. But if you are able to, I think, the better you do in a university degree, if you get an internship, that's really useful. Um, then hopefully you'll get a job after that, and that's the main the aim of, the, of finishing your degree. The challenges in the market actually are that uh, the job market actually really demands uh, graduates to be proficient in skills. Uh, the, de the degree can actually give um, a theoretical foundation to the students, but the, it's the skills that actually matter, which is important for students to gain that doing university by doing extracurricular activities. 
Uh, the main challenges currently in the market is that I believe there, there's a lot of people applying for jobs. It's actually becoming very competitive. And you don't only have graduates of, from universities in the UAE, but you actually have graduates from universities in the Middle East as well as abroad. So a lot of people are coming into UAE and looking for job opportunities. And uh, this is making it more competitive. And being an AUS graduate, again, gives you an edge over other graduates. So you somehow stand out from, of the crowd. And at the same time, um, in general, AUS graduates need to always keep in mind that they need to keep on working and improving themselves, whether through certifications, whether through working while they're students, internships. It's very important to uh, differentiate yourself from the rest. Economist graduates from the AUS have been very distinguished in terms of the uh, course content that they are uh, introduced to, as well as uh, another very important feature, which is that uh, our experience suggests that most of them, especially the most uh, accomplished one, they had an opportunity to undertake research with their professors. And so when they come to us as young professionals, uh, they are almost ready to go. With very little supervision, they can actually uh, collect data, analyze data, and do some uh, literature review uh, and their technical capabilities, especially in terms of uh, quantitative analysis, is quite distinguished. Our criteria basically is that the, uh, the employee, the young professional, has to have some basics uh, in economics, micro, macro, quantitative, and also has the kind of analytical capacity to learn uh, and to develop his or her expertise on, on research. And that's why, you know, so far we have hired six graduates uh, from since, nine, since 2008, six graduates from AUS. And also I think because compared to other universities, AUS um, has a, a, an, ex, you know, an explicit program on economics. In, 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 in other universities, they are mostly uh, business oriented with some uh, minor in economics. And that's a big difference. It has had a big impact in, uh, in my life. Uh, it has helped me uh, understand priorities, for example, the fact that we don't have uh, all the resources that we wish to have to buy everything that we want to buy. Uh, that makes you prioritize. Uh, it has helped me to be um, disciplined with uh, my savings, my spending. Uh, it has helped me be more conscious about my health uh, not because of health costs involved, but because uh, quality of life is pretty much a function of how healthy you are, and uh, and all of that is, is 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 things that you know we come across uh, as as a, as economists. So it ha has a big impact uh, in uh, in more than one front for sure. Learning economics does, I think, change the way you think about things. Maybe I thought about these things before in, a, in this sort of way, and then become, becoming an economist made it feel more natural. But uh, economists are very logical people, and uh, we think logically in situations where other people would really suggest that you shouldn't think so logically. But I'll give an example. I, I, think, I think economically all the time. Um, I, I get into arguments with my wife about how to pack a dishwasher. And she likes to pack it very carefully, like she's an engineer. And I throw the dishes in this way and that way, any which way. And then if it's half full, sometimes I'll run it. I don't wait to fill it all up. Uh, and the reason I do this is because I'm aware of the use of a dishwasher, which is to economize on my labor, which is valuable. And so I treat it that way. Uh, and this is one thing uh, you know, a small thing in daily life that uh, is the way that I think about something. I, I, uh, I had this argument with my wife about this issue and I never win it. Uh, I win it in class only when I tell it to students. Uh, but it, yeah, it does affect the way that I think. The thing is with economics, you don't really uh, know the notions, the name of the things that you already do. For example, uh, opportunity cost. You don't really call it opportunity cost when you're thinking about, uh, for example, you have an exam tomorrow, you're thinking about going out tonight for a movie theater. So are you going to go on a 
night where you have an exam the next day or you're going to do it on a week night or weekday uh, weekend where you're going to have not really much going on the next day so for example we usually we almost always think about these kind of things but unless you know economics you start taking economics you don't know how, what to name it so opportunity cost sunk cost when you're waiting in line at a grocery store for example uh, you wait there and when the line is not moving as an economist i actually learned that well my time until that point is a sunk cost so if there's a new cashier opening i just go and change my line because whatever i did until that point it's just gone there's nothing I can do to get it back. So some of the things like being rational, sun cost, opportunity cost, game theory, these are actually the things we start using uh, in real life. Well, I think you, you pay more attention to the fine details that most people tend to ignore. And you tend to uh, always question things. And sometimes you, uh, you observe things that perhaps sometimes are not even noticeable. You travel and you start noticing that uh, prices don't seem to fit what we learn about economies of scale. And then you realize that there are certain elements that are specific to the environment where you're observing such things that perhaps prevent businesses uh, from passing on cost savings to people. And so, uh, and so that's the thing, is the, the ability to start seeing things from a much uh, more detailed uh, uh, perspective than a normal citizen. You know, uh, economics teaches you to, I mean, it trains you in analytical thinking. So I guess uh, in my thinking or judgment, I became more analytical. And whenever any situation comes, I always ask what is the purpose behind it? If anyone is doing something, I always ask why he's doing it. So I guess I always look for the incentive behind any actions. Sometimes during grad school, I realized, maybe, you know, first it was unconscious, uh, unconsciously, obviously, that um, whenever people tell me about their plans or their actions, I'm always looking for what is the motivating factor behind. So I've really started, I started seeing the world in the way we, uh, we preach about it in terms of incentives and trade-offs. And even when I'm doing anything, though I'm very spontaneous, I'm trying to to see why am I really doing it. And in the end, it really comes down to, uh, to some sort of incentive or a trade-off I'm, I'm going after, or something I'm going after, but then I can recognize the trade-off. So to me, I think this is the biggest, uh, the biggest change, because I see the world, you see the world differently, right? You, you think of people's behaviors differently, you think of policies differently. So it's uh, trying to identify incentives and, uh, and trade-offs. Economics allows you and wants you, as it did with me, to have a special window of scrutiny. Even when I go to shopping, you know, um, uh, I, I look at the way I shop, look at the way my wife shops, and, you know, um, and I don't spend much time in shopping. There's a reason for that, because uh, I believe that the margin cost of not being in my office or at my work is so high that I don't want to spend that much time uh, in shopping. Even just a little mundane small issue of shopping uh, comes back to me as an economic issue. I compare the addition of marginal cost to marginal benefit of that action. I would encourage students to think hard. Uh, I've heard someone tell me that 96% um, of, of the effort of our brain is used doing things like walking and digesting and breathing. And that only leaves 4% for really thinking about things. And it's natural for people to economize on scarce resources. We all economize on our thinking. We're lazy about thinking. It's a, it's a natural tendency, I think. I would encourage them to, um, to read outside of the classroom, right? Because it's, economics, especially in the beginning, can be a little bit dry. So without, uh, without having some extra effort from their side, it would be quite difficult to, uh, to see the beauty of it.
the the benefit of economics is that you learn skills and you learn tools and techniques and these techniques and skills are very useful particularly when you're trying to cross over to other disciplines so you've, it's common to see an economist uh, do research with psychologists with uh, sociologists with with finance experts, with accountants, uh, with in the medical field as well. And so the fact that it has so much overlap with other areas is, is very attractive. At the same time, you're not learning a very limited set of skills. You're learning a set of skills that give you access to various opportunities. And this is why I chose economics, and this is why I think economics is one of the best choices uh, for, uh, for students and graduating students. You have to just keep at it. it. It doesn't get easy. Nothing is easy, so you just have to keep on um, trying to understand the concepts of it. When new students join economics, they're generally told it's a really hard field, that you're going to drop out soon, that you're not going to do well. Uh, my advice would just be to stick with it. You're going to have fun and you're going to learn a lot. And um, just fight it out, it'll be worth it in the end. A couple advices, maybe one, uh, to be passionate you know, to really enjoy what they do. Uh, the second one, which I think is really important, is to be proactive. Uh, the last thing employer wants is uh, to tell people what to do all the time. Uh, people have to be able to contribute with new ideas, new methods. So uh, just don't wait uh, to be told all the time what to do. Perhaps early on, that's always happened, but uh, you have to be proactive. And I think that's the most critical part of uh, for a new professional. I think I would tell them to do exactly what I did. Be interested and concerned in and about of society. You are the cream of the crop. You're the best of the society. As college students, where society spent so much on you and educates you, and making sure that you have the highest human capital, you, it is incumbent upon you to think about uh, issues, problems, solution, uh, and the solutions uh, thereof in the society and uh, come up with new products, come up with new ideas, most importantly. And as I always say, have an entrepreneurial mentality to put your ideas into practice.